Welcome on in to the Cleveland Browns Report. We got some draft news to get to to open up the show, and then we're going to look at the latest rumors surrounding your Brownies. But Mike Garofolo tweeting out earlier this morning, Texas tight end Jatavion Sanders, viewed by many as tight end two in this month's draft, is visiting the Panthers and Browns over the next couple of days. An excellent vertical weapon per move the sticks. That's Daniel Jeremiah's uh, Twitter handle. Sanders is a likely second round pick. So let's get to know Sanders for a moment, and then we'll talk about whether or not this would be a good or bad pick for the Browns, okay? Last year for Texas, 682 yards, two touchdowns. I know those aren't eye-popping numbers, but just think about who he had to share the ball with. Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, and an offense that goes to the wide receiver first, running back second, tight end third. So he had some pretty good production as a team's like fourth option, right? After Sand, after Mitchell and Worthy and Jonathan Brooks in the backfield. Uh, he's six foot four, two hundred forty-five pounds. Ran a four-six forty-yard dash. So from an athletic standpoint, it's a big body to throw to. He's got good speed. He was a two-time first-team All Big Twelve player. And I thought you guys might find this interesting. Lance Zerline from NFL Network. His player comp for Sanders was the Chiefs, David Njoku. So you want two David Njokus? I don't think that's a bad thing to have. Uh, when you look at the Browns' tight end room, though, I can see why Cleveland would be interested in going tight end because after Njoku, there's uh, not a lot of good depth there, right? I don't think Zaire mitchell Payton's is going to make this roster. Sorry. Uh, Giovanni Ricci is a fullback at best. Uh, Jordan Aikens didn't really show us a whole lot last year, and Outside of the red zone, he does not provide you a whole lot of targets and production. So I have mixed feelings on this selection. Because on one hand, you are one injury away from Njoku going down and the Browns not having a very good tight end room behind him. So I think that is a spot where you could definitely add some depth. But if you get in the weeds and just nerd out with me for a moment, if you're going to go get a tight end around two, I would think you'd have a good plan in place to use him, right? I don't know if your first pick in the draft should be used on just a backup job because that's what he will be. If David Njoku plays all 17 games, he'll be the backup. And he'll continue being the backup for a long time because it's not like Njoku is pushing 32, 33 years old. So if you draft Sanders, then I would believe you have a plan in place to change your offense from last year to this year to use more two tight end sets, allow me to demonstrate. Last year, the Browns ranked 11th in 11 personnel. 11 personnel means one running back, one tight end, and everyone else is a wide receiver. So in this case, three wide receivers, right? Uh, 12 personnel is one running back, two tight ends, okay? The Browns in two tight end sets, two tight end sets ranked 28th in the NFL last year. Now, they didn't have a great second option because Harrison Bryant, I think after that Steelers game, just never really found his way out of the doghouse. But I want to share that and compare it to the Buffalo Bills because Ken Dorsey comes over from Buffalo where he had two good tight ends last year, Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid. So with two receiving threats at that position, you can see that the Bills in 12 personnel, they rank 17th, nearly one out of every five plays had two tight ends on the field, more than double than what the Browns had. Now go back a year prior, 2022, and you can see that this is actually very different because in 2022, the Browns, they used more 12 personnel, right? They were much more open to Njoku and Harrison Bryant being on the field. Whereas the Buffalo Bills, they were dead last in the league in 12 personnel, one running back, two tight ends. So what changed for them to go from dead last to middle of the pack. Well, they drafted Dalton Kincaid. So Ken Dorsey showed us that he'll lean into his personnel. He's not going to try and fit a circle in a triangle. If he's got good two tight ends, that's he'll use both tight ends. So the next step here is, if you go get another tight end, what kind of role does Ken Dorsey have in shaping this offense? Is it Ken Dorsey's play calling? And if so, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of two tight end sets. And maybe that's what this is a sign of, of the Browns are going, all right, Dorsey, you had a lot of success last year with two tight ends. Do you want to have two tight ends this year? Because we like Sanders as a player, but we want to make sure before we draft him, 
there's a good plan in place for him to be incorporated into the offense. So if you trade for two wide receivers, which the Browns have done the last two off seasons in Elijah Moore and Jerry Judy, and then you go draft a tight end to, I would assume, have more two tight end sets, you can only have 11 guys on the field. Five are offensive linemen. One's a quarterback. So that leaves you with five open spots. And it's tough to have three wide receivers, two tight ends, uh-oh, and a running back. You're going to have too many men in the huddle called very often on you. So to me, it doesn't seem like this is a great fit for the Browns because why trade for Elijah Moore and Jerry Judy just to put one of them on the bench because you drafted Sanders and you want to use more two tight end sets or why draft Sanders if he's going to sit on the bench? To me, I just don't really think that from a X's and O's in the weeds uh, standpoint, it's a perfect fit, right? There's definitely going to be opportunities to incorporate two tight end sets and not have more and Judy on the field because they don't have to play 100% of the snaps. But I just don't think this is something the Browns are going to be going towards offensively with the way Andrew Barry constructed this roster. Now, before we get to the rest of our rumors here, if you want more NFL draft analysis, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We are less than 50 subs away from reaching 34,000 subscribers, so please help us reach that milestone. I want to get there before the NFL draft, and then I want to get to 35,000, hopefully after the draft. I know, ambitious, but there's going to be a lot of uh, views coming in throughout the draft weekend, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's get into some rumors. Are the Browns not playing in Brazil? I'm going to give this three Bernie heads. I don't think it's a completely shut door case, but it's like 3.9 Bernie heads. I'm just not going to cut Bernie Kosar's face into nine tenths. And I'll tell you why in just a second. But first, I got to tell you all about our wonderful sponsor today, which is Game Time. Spring is here, which means we've got Guardians baseball, playoff basketballs around the corner, and then we've got hockey, summer concerts. There's a lot of fun to be had over the next few months. And I don't want you to miss any of it because of ticket prices. But if you download the Game Time app, the number one spot to get tickets, well, you can get $20 off your first purchase when you use code CHATSPORTS. Now, I put that information in the comments and description of today's video to help you guys out. But let's be honest, there is nothing worse than going through 30 minutes of legwork finding tickets just to see that it's double the price because of fees and taxes. But Game Time actually will show you the all-in price right from the home screen. So you don't get your hopes up just to see that it's nowhere near the actual price on the sticker. So download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account and redeem code CHAT Sports for $20 off for those of you that don't know how to spell chat sports. Download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, going back to the Browns not, not playing in Brazil, three Bernie heads, uh, Packers beat reporter Rob Domofsky tweeted out based on Packers president Mark Murphy's comments this morning. It sounds like they are preparing to open the season in Brazil against the Eagles. Speaking before the annual tailgate tour departed, Murphy said, we're either the first or second most popular team in Brazil. So I don't know if he kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit. If he knows, I don't know why the whole NFL can't know. Why does the, the Packers president need to know this information for an extra week? Right? Why not just have everyone be on the same page about it? But to me... It does seem like it's going to be the Green Bay Packers facing off against the Philadelphia Eagles in Sao Paulo on that Friday of NFL Week 1. And I don't want to say I told you so, but I'll, I'll take a minor victory lap. Uh, go back in time to like a month and a half ago, two months ago, whenever the announcement was that the Browns are going to be in contention to play against the Eagles in Brazil. My initial prediction was, I think it's going to be the Packers. So it's looking, le looking like that way, and honestly... I'm not losing sleep over this. Um, I went through the pros and cons on previous videos of playing in Brazil. Like, pro, if you play on a Friday, you won't play again until the next Sunday. You kind of have a mini-buy compared to your opponent 
that is playing on Sunday. Con, you have to go travel to Brazil. Like, that could be a problem, right? That may not bring out the best football, and you probably want to start the season on the right foot. Um, hopefully, this just means the Browns are home NFL week one. Nice home opener in front of the dog pound. Uh, likely going to be on the road week two. So, Con, you probably would have had back-to-back road games. That would have been a bummer. So, either way, I was either going to be on board or quickly okay with them not playing in it because I, I don't have a strong opinion as to the Cleveland Browns' success in 2024 is rooted in opening up the season in Sao Paulo. Would it have been cool from a national standpoint? Yeah, of course. Did the Browns do very well last year under the national spotlight? Not really. So maybe don't have Deshaun Watson open up the season on Peacock, 7.30 p.m. How about he plays at noon, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern on Sunday? That's probably going to get a better overall result. Wouldn't you agree? So did you want to play in Brazil? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Keep it short and sweet for me in the comment section. We haven't gotten a lot of comments on our videos lately. I don't want to sound like thirsty or desperate, but I do really enjoy reading your guys' comments and seeing what you guys have to say. So don't be a stranger. Pop on down, drop a comment. Next rumor up on the show, are the Browns going offensive tackle on day two? I'm going to give this two Bernie heads. Um, it could be graduated to three, but for now I'm going to keep it at two. So the reason why we're talking about this is because um, Jack Duffin, who does an excellent job of following the team, uh, kind of keeping up with the cap and whatnot, which is an absolute enigma, uh, he tweeted this out, and it kind of got uh, the gears turning in my head. If the Browns don't draft a tackle this year, the chances they extend wills go up significantly. Chill the hype around running back, defensive line, and linebacker at 54. Keep mocking those tackles high. So I saw that, but like, you know, that's just one guy's opinion. It's not the gospel. Uh, then the ClevelandBrowns.com website, uh, the, the Browns themselves, which it always kind of blows my mind that the team will put out mock drafts. Like, you're the fucking team. Shouldn't you just know what you're doing? Um, they had some of their staff writers put out their projection, their proje oh, prediction for pick 85 in round three. And both of them had going offensive tackle. So maybe when there's smoke, there's fire in this case. So let's kind of get to know these two prospects here for a moment. Starting with the Mizzou left tackle, Javon Foster. Six foot five, 313 pounds. A massive human being. That's what you want at your offensive tackle spot. Plenty of experience. Started 39 games at left tackle, two games at right tackle. So usually in college football, teams place their best tackle on the left side of the offensive line because they want to keep their quarterback healthy. So that definitely says a whole lot about Foster. If Mizzou, for three seasons, put him at left tackle even before he was a senior. Uh, Two-time team captain, 2023 third-team AP All-American and first-team All-ACC. So plenty of awards surrounding him on his mantle. But I think uh, from an experience standpoint, definitely checks out as someone the Browns may want to get after. The next tackle we're going to talk about here is Karan Amiganji. So several insiders have him pegged as this year's like sleeper, right? Played in the Ivy League, so didn't go up against the best competition. There's not going to be a lot of eyeballs on him. But he started at left tackle the last two seasons after beginning his career at guard. He didn't even start playing football until much later in high school. Sorry. Uh, now, he unfortunately suffered a torn quad after four games into 2023. So there was maybe a little bit of medical concerns and lack of film from last season. But he's definitely someone to keep an eye on. Um, We'll see how they view Jed Wills. If the Browns don't view Jed Wills as someone long-term for them, then maybe they go out and draft a replacement this year. And both those guys have experience at left tackle. If the folks in Berea do think Jed Wills is a candidate to receive a second contract from the team, then I don't see them prioritizing tackle. But there's so many good tackles in this draft class, wouldn't put it past them to think, let's go start preparing for a new left tackle if we don't see Jed Wills getting a second contract from us. So should the Browns draft an offensive tackle? D for draft, P for pass. What do you think? I mean, I don't think many of us thought they were going to go with Dewan Jones last year, and I think that was simply a value pick of, like, the Browns had Dewan Jones as a third-round grade. He was there in round four. Couldn't pass on that. I could see that situation happening again. 
I don't think they're going to reach for a tackle. They're like, we got this guy's around four guy, but we really want to tackle. Let's take him at pick 85. Okay, to wrap up the show, let's bring on Trizzy Trace. Trace, which card do you want to go with? Um, I'm going to go with the Six of Spades. Six of Spades? Yes. I'm going to go with the, I don't know. Get eight, your comments uh, in, too. What do y'all think it's going to be? Eight, I like that. Good, good plug, dude. Oh, yeah. Eight of Diamonds. All right, ready? Ten of Clubs. Oh. Ten of Clubs. All right. That will do it for us on this edition of the Cleveland Browns Report. Sorry for kind of the rough landing at the end. Kind of been battling a cold, needed a cough, and so my eyes started watering, and I just looked like a zombie on screen. So we'll sign off. I'll take some use next, and I'll see you guys later. Thank you.